listening throughout the morning to Los Angeles, where President Reagan will be presenting the uh, uh, special award to the Voyager pilots, and we hope to be talking with them after that award presentation. Also today, magician Harry Blackstone Jr. will be amazing us with a little sleight of hand. Right now we're going through some sleight of cameras, but we'll <laughs> get on track here, folks. Dan Modea is an investigative reporter who has previously written about Jimmy Hoffa and contributed numerous articles on organized crime. Although Moldea doesn't claim that Ronald Reagan is a crook, he does allege that some of his friends and associates may be. Dark Victory, Ronald Reagan, MCA and the Mob is the name of his book. Dan Moldea joining us from Washington today. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Dan. That book uh, title in itself could be inflammatory, could it not? I mean, yeah, that's going to lead a lot of people to think that uh, somehow Ronald Reagan is connected with the mob, with organized crime? Well, basically the book is about uh, MCA, the most powerful entertainment conglomerate in the world. They own Universal Pictures, Universal Television, MCA Records. It's about Reagan, the most powerful man in America. And it's about the Chicago Mafia, the most powerful organized crime group in the country. The major characters being Reagan, uh, Lou Wasserman, the most powerful man in the entertainment uh, world. Uh, he's chairman of the board of MCA, and he was Reagan's talent agent when he was in Hollywood. And it's about Sidney Korshak, the Chicago Mafia's link between uh, the, uh, to, the, to the Hollywood film industry, and he's been described by law enforcement officials as the liaison between the legitimate business world and organized crime. What I do is I describe the intertwining relationships among these three men. All right, now you, you did say that it's really a story about MCA through which uh, Ronald Reagan did have some dealings when he was president of the Screen Actors Guild. That was a long time ago. Do those connections still exist? Yeah, I think much of it carries over. Basically, what I'm charging is that MCA, throughout its, um, uh, has, has invented, uh, created Ronald Reagan. I'm saying that, uh, that Reagan was a subject of and uh, subpoenaed before a federal grand jury, uh, which was investigating kickbacks and payoffs that Reagan had received in return for concessions that he had granted to uh, his talent agency, now, let me MCA. Interrupt there. I mean, he did receive kickbacks and payoffs, or he was that alleged was the, to, that's what that they were looking the into. They, they never proved that, did they? Well, the investigation itself was inconclusive. Reagan testified before the federal grand jury. The uh, federal prosecutors investigating the case uh, believed that Reagan had perjured himself on a number of occasions, and as a continuing investigation into the allegations of kickbacks and payoffs that Reagan had received, uh, subpoenaed his federal income tax returns from 1952 to 1955. And it showed that Reagan, uh, through these concessions while president of the Screen Actors Guild had uh, helped make MCA a multi-billion dollar business and that is a quid pro quo uh, MCA helped turn Ronald Reagan into a multi-millionaire. All right now that deal that uh, he helped uh, MCA uh, gain a lot of money well, if you can't briefly explain that to our viewers out there so they can understand it. How they, well Reagan first of all was Lou Wasserman's uh, uh, first million dollar client. He negotiated a uh, million dollar contract with Warner Brothers for Reagan back during the early 1940s, after the blanket waiver which Reagan had negotiated uh, for MCA on behalf of the Screen Actors Guild, permitting his talent agency to go into television production in 1952 was, uh, was granted. Uh, Reagan was having some serious financial problems. MCA got him into Las Vegas where he operated the Last Frontier Hotel. Then when he returned to, uh, to uh, Hollywood, he became the host and was the only person considered to be host for MCA's flagship program, the General Electric Theater. Uh, later on, MCA, its, uh, its uh, founder and chairman of the board then, Jules Stein, and uh, a vice president of MCA, Taft Schreiber, uh, who was Reagan's political mentor, uh, helped negotiate the sale of Reagan's California properties at hugely inflated prices, uh, which in But MCA made, uh, did Reagan that with a lot of their, uh, their clients, did they not? A lot of actors made a lot well, of money Reagan was completely through real unique. estate deals that MCA made. Reagan was completely unique in this. I can't find a single actor who benefited uh, uh, certainly professionally they would benefit from MCA through production at Universal Television and Universal Pictures or even MCA Records but I'm not aware of anyone who was benefited as a result of uh, their uh, you know in their personal life through the sales of their properties particularly when these sales came down the month after Reagan was elected governor of California mm -hmm. in December 1966. And that grand jury testimony which uh, you have uh, the entire document in 1962 that was in Los Angeles, federal grand yes, jury sir. in Los Angeles. Yes. Sir. Now some interpretations I guess uh, some people telling you that it looks like he was evasive, he was lying, uh, this sort of business. When I read through it it sounds like a confused man. Uh, for example, uh, there's one quote here. Well, you are asking me things I haven't thought about much for a long time. As a matter of fact, I didn't think about them too much then. There's a lot of that sort of comment in, uh, in his grand jury testimony, which you still hear to this day. We, the president at times does get confused. So do you think it was a matter of the president being confused, actually forgetting material, information, 
or do you think he was actually being evasive? I think he was perjuring himself repeatedly. And I, again, I, the prosecutors believe that as such. That's, that's why they subpoenaed his income tax returns from 1952 to 1955. There was an it was, the investigation is inconclusive once again. There was a deal. This, this whole thing came about as a part of, a, of an antitrust investigation of MCA, which resulted from the blanket waiver in which the talent agency was involved in television production. Uh, there was a settlement between MCA and the federal government with the Kennedy Justice Department in 1962. And as a proviso of this settlement, all criminal and civil charges against the uh, MCA and its indicted co-conspirator, the Screen Actors Guild, particularly the Screen Actors Guild while Reagan was president, uh, that all criminal and civil charges against and investigations of these people would be dropped, which included Ronald Reagan. And basically it becomes a question of, uh, we're not talking about minor details, we're talking about the major decisions that Reagan made while he was president of the Screen Actors Guild. And I think the question then is, uh, is the question that's relevant now, you know, what did the president know and when did he forget it? Mm -hmm. So you, you maintain he's still sort of in the pocket of MCA and some of the people he held back then and vice versa. I'm saying that he was, an, he was an invention of MCA. I'm further saying that MCA has dealt with organized crime throughout its history, that Reagan himself has been influenced by people associated with organized crime throughout his career, and that some of his appointments and policies while in the White House have been uh, influenced by these associations. In spite of his well-known, well-publicized stand against organized crime. I believe that his war against organized crime, his war against drugs, uh, has been nothing more than a charade in a public relations campaign, and I think that the evidence is clear on that. I think that this entire Contragate situation, when it bottoms out, will bottom out into drugs, that there was uh, basically a twofold investigation going on up on Capitol Hill right now, that there were the people who were selling uh, drugs uh, to purchase weapons for the Contras as part of their Ilium Ossinary activity. And then there were those who were more mercenary about it, selling drugs for profit, using the Contras as a, uh, as a cover for their operations. I think that the, that the entire scenario where you talk about uh, missing millions of dollars, laundered money, Swiss bank accounts, is going to end up, uh, is going to bottom line at drugs. And I think that Costa Rica, which is a major jump off point, for launching drugs into the United States will become the focus of attention. Well, this is a new accusation. It's new to me and new to everybody else, I suppose. Uh, who would be selling these drugs? We only have a short amount of time, but I mean, who, uh, are these people uh, National Security Council? Who's doing the drug selling here? That's what the investigation is going to be about. That's, what's, that's what the investigation is up on the Hill, whether it's by the Senate Foreign Relations Committee or by the select committees, either in the House or the Senate, or, are investigating right now. Well, you've opened up another can of worms, Dan Maldea. Thank you for joining us. The book is uh, Dark Victory, Ronald Reagan, MCA and the Mob. Thank you, Dan. Lois will be here in just a moment to tell you uh, what is still to come on this program. But uh, in the meantime, watch camera. We <laughs>